Welcome back. So we recently just got the news that Ephraim is finally getting his Resplendent, which long overdue, but you know what? Can't complain, we finally got it. And now because we have news that he has his Resplendent, I can confidently say this is probably one of the best Resplendents we've gotten probably ever. I know we've had a lot of good Resplendents, like I don't want to take that away from anybody. We've had Brave Ike, we've had Krom, Lucina, Seleph. I'm more so talking character-wise with the weapon that they come with more so than anything else, but we've had a good amount of contenders. Even early days we had Eliwood who was really really good, and Hector still holds up quite well because of Berserk Armads. But in my opinion, Ephraim is probably one of the best, if not the best, response we've gotten in terms of just bang for your buck, mainly because he has access to Flame Sigmund. And for anyone who isn't familiar with the likes of Flame Sigmund, it basically grants a guaranteed follow-up if the conditions are met, it grants attack and defense plus four, and then for the refine, it has accelerated cooldown per attack, both on your attacks and the foe's attacks, as well as a debuff on the foe for minus 5 attack and defense, meaning that he's going to be hitting quite hard in general, but also if he needs to take a hit physically, he can. I know I may be jumping the gun when I say this is probably one of the best, if not the best, respondents we've gotten ever, but to me, I'm more so looking at it through the lens of what we've gotten in the past, but also what else there is offered in the game currently, both in terms of just accessible units, but also premium units. I found that when comparing them by the likes of easily accessible 4 stars, as well as a couple 5 stars, that he still is able to shine on his own because he has a lot going for him. In terms of just easily accessible units, I found that Lucas and Dom were probably some of the closer comparisons to any of the other four stars that we have in the game. Mainly Donald and Lucas because their stat lines are fairly similar, but also due to the fact that Donald has his player phase brave, which means he's going to be doubling every time he initiates combat. And then Lucas because he can act as a suitable enemy phase tank with pretty min-max stats in general. I feel like it's a bit of a stretch to say they're similar though, mainly because the weapons in mind you just do so many different things. And overall, Ephraim just has a lot more flexibility because he has the guaranteed follow-up in both phases. Meaning that for player phase strategies, while he doesn't always necessarily get the double if there's a no follow-up effect or whatever the case may be, then Donald will always attack twice. But for the enemy phase, Lucas still has the ability to bundle up next to allies and then use a far save as Flame Sigmund does have a solo condition if the foe is to initiate combat. However, in terms of just raw stats, a regular Resplendent Ephraim is going to have more attack than a maxed out Donald, which is kind of crazy to think about just because of how much you're investing into one singular unit as opposed to just getting a Gen 1 unit with a modern refine attached to them and just being able to outperform more often than not. However, Lucas does have a bit more attack if you were to account for Daybreak Lance, However, he is attached to the likes of Quick Repost, as he doesn't have any notable enemy face skills or any notable lances that guarantee a follow-up, as opposed to the likes of Coral Saber and Seahorse Axe. And while he still has a good amount of defense over a base Ephraim, I find that being able to secure your own doubles, especially if you were to go down the likes of the Seleph route where you run no follow-up so you can secure your own doubles in both phases, that Ephraim's just going to be a lot more consistent in terms of damage output. But despite all this, I still do think that there are merits to each and every one of these units, and you may be thinking to yourself that it's maybe unfair to compare a 5 star unit to a bunch of 4 stars, and you know, you're probably right in that regard. Which is why I also looked through the list of 5 star infantry lances to see if there's anything worth comparing, and for the most part a lot of the infantry lances that are 5 star really do different things, whether they're just spurn tanks or they have AoE blazing wind sets or whatever the case may be. I found that the closest and really only notable comparison to base Ephraim with Flame Sigmund is Duo Ephraim, who has his Reagan Leaf, which also provides a guaranteed follow-up if he either has more attack than the foe, or he has additional movement granted to him, and he has armor and cavalry effectiveness. The armor effectiveness will definitely come in handy, especially if you are looking to pierce through armors who have a ridiculous amount of bulk. However, that comes with the trade-off of not having accelerated cooldown per attack, meaning that in terms of just consistent damage output or Gale Force triggers, base Ephraim is just going to be a lot more consistent in general. That being said though, the differences are probably going to be quite minimal if you already have a maxed out dual Ephraim, but assuming you just have one over the other, I still find that in terms of just easily accessible lance infantries or lances in general, base Ephraim with Flame Sigmund is going to be doing so much. However, this is only for the infantry units. In my opinion, base Ephraim's competition doesn't really stem from the infantry lances, but rather 
the cavalry lances, not only for gale force purposes, but also general tanking. And two notable units that came to mind were Gerald and the recently released Brave Crom. Well, actually, both of them are pretty recently released, but nevertheless, Brave Crom does have a common trait with Flame Siegmund, as both weapons do grant accelerated cooldown per attack, meaning that if they were to go in and trigger specials or gale force or whatever the case may be, they both can do that. However, because Brave Crumb also has innate slaying, it will be more consistent in triggering specials, especially three cooldown or five cooldown ones, as he'll need less skills or support to fully charge a gale force, even if there are guard effects, which is really, really convenient. And you could always make the argument that base Ephraim can just run time spells, which he can. However, then he loses out on stuff like Tempest. So his movement is still gonna be reduced to two unless you have external support, maybe from an Annette or Ash. But then you also have Gerald, who has a guaranteed follow-up in his weapon, but also he debuffs during combat, and his stat line is just generally more modern. Outside of the guaranteed follow-up and debuffs, that's pretty much all he has, which isn't bad by any means. However, with the accelerated cooldown that comes from Flame Segment, he's more than likely going to be able to consistently trigger specials, which is really, really nice, especially since it works off the foe's attacks as well, meaning that if you just wanted to run low cooldown specials for triggering specials and getting damage out, it works. Meanwhile, Geralt will have to run Heavy Blade somewhere in his kit. If he does want to trigger specials such as Draconic Aura or Gale Force, he will need it somewhere in his kit, or he will need to run external support if he wants to get those specials going really easily. Which isn't the worst per se, but that does also open room for Ephraim to run more skills that boost his attack and defense overall, meaning that with proper investment, he could also outstat him. However, Gerald also has his supportive niche, which is really nice. But nevertheless, I found that these two units were probably the closest comparisons to the likes of Ephraim and Flame Sigmund, which is weird to say because they're both cavalry. And the other thing that they both have going for them is that they're both free. Well, okay, to be fair, Krom is semi-free. That's assuming you choose him as your free CYO unit. Meanwhile, Gerald is completely free. You can get him in the Grail Shop or in the Grand Hero Battle whenever he reruns. So they're both definitely cheaper in some aspects. Gerald definitely more cheaper than Brave Krom, but even with that being the case, Brave Krom still has a higher ceiling for both damage output and tanking because he has his gimmick of just copying visible buffs, which is really, really convenient. But even so, for a regular Gen 1 unit, I find that he does have a lot of value, especially compared to other Resplendents that we've gotten, as listed Brave Ike, Krom, Lucina, Seleph, there's plenty of value with those, but in my opinion, I find that Ephraim just has a bit more going for him, especially since now that we have the likes of Coral Saber, so Celeste's niche isn't as potent. Krom and Lucina are just stat six, which are nice, but they do fulfill different niches as opposed to the guaranteed follow-up that Ephraim gets from his weapon. And then Brave Ike, which is still really, really good as is. However, we do get a free five-star copy in the hero's path, so I don't find he's as imperative to get. But that doesn't take away value from Brave Ike. I just find that if you were to go and buy a Resplendent, Ephraim is probably going to be a bit more worthwhile simply because we do get a free Brave Ike. And for anybody who is planning on getting Ephraim, I do have some builds worth recommending. If you just want to use them on budget right out of the gate, you can basically just give them a healing special such as Noontime, Run Attack Defense Ideal from a Skahawk, Rouse Attack Defense, which you can get from a Bertram, Wrath, I believe is either on Ninja Hannah or Follow Neurum, and Attack Defense Solo, so you're just basically bolstering his two most important stats, and then having consistent sustainability, just so he can continue to have really good damage output. However, if you just want to focus on the player phase, you could just give him Death Blow, Desperation, and Defense Smoke with Moonbow, so that way his damage output is just really, really consistent. Desperation is really nice in this regard, especially if you're just looking to get two attacks out at once, and it does work really well on budget. However, for the Super Ephraim enthusiasts out there, you can actually run a pretty meaty Gale Force set. The idea here is that you mainly just stack up speed, so that way he can just prevent any sort of counterattack, which can really, really help for his survivability, especially if you want to run a hit and run set. You give him Times Pulse, Wind Sweep, Attack Speed Ideal, and Blade Sessions, so he's stacking up a bunch of attack and speed, and then assuming he can double, or if he has some sort of no follow-up support, whether that's from a Fallen Lilith, or Infantry Speed Tactic, or whatever the case may be, he can still Gale Force through a bunch of stuff with Wary or Impact Effects, which is really good. However, if you want to focus more on his sustainability, you could also go down the Sturdy Surge route with Dragon Fang and No Follow-Up. No Follow-Up is there just so he could secure his doubles against any foe that doesn't have No Follow-Up in their kit. 
but with Sturdy Surge, he can heal back whatever damage he takes on the Retaliation. And then with Attack Smoke 4, he could basically shut down a lot of faster units that may be able to outspeed them if they lack no follow. And then you're still doing the same thing with stacking up attack and defense as much as possible. Sturdy Surge really isn't going to come into play in the enemy phase, but it can be really nice for healing back whatever HP you lose during that phase if you were to initiate combat in the next player phase. And then outside of that, you can turn him into an enemy phase unit because his guaranteed follow-up does work in both phases, but you will have to be wary of how much damage he is taking because with enough units attacking him, he could always be whittled down which is why you want to run a healing special such as Noontime. You can still keep no follow-up, which is going to be really, really important, just so he can prevent guaranteed follow-up attacks. You can stack up Attack and Defense with the likes of Sturdy Sands 3, Joint Drive Attack, and Attack Defense Solo. And this should work out pretty well, since most foes that are one range tend to target defense anyway. You should be able to shrug off a lot of damage, and whatever damage he does take, you should be able to heal it back almost immediately, because Flame Segment does provide accelerated cooldown per attack. But if you are worried about units that can also target his res, mainly dragons, you can stack up the likes of Close Defense as with Flame Siegmund debuffing the foe's attack by 5 points, and then with Close Defense 4 and Close Defense 3, he's getting a plus 19 defense in res from all of that, which can actually be really good, especially if you are the run no follow-up, which is going to be imperative not only for securing your own doubles, but shutting off automatic doubles from foes such as Saros, who can also be a problem. However, you may also want to run this with maybe some sort of Elamine support or Flame support if the Dragon Foe in question just hits extremely, extremely hard. So take that for what you will. And that's really about it. I don't really have much else to say on Resplendent Ephraim. I think he's a really, really good pickup if you are hesitant on picking him up. You could also just wait until we figure out who's coming after Ephraim. You don't have to necessarily buy him right away, especially if you don't want Lanku, who has really, really cool art. But nevertheless, just let me know what your thoughts are down below. Are you happy that Ephraim's finally getting his Resplendent? Are you going to buy it? Are you going to skip out on it? Let me know down below. And until next time, I'll see you later.